Hey, my name's Tim Buell, and today what we're going to do is we're going to break down the whole production and mix of Pox Melodium, a Remedy Drive song that I mixed recently. For a live performance, all recorded in run room, um, vocals, drums, same room, violin, drums, same room. Um, it was uh, a performance to both launch my brand new studio that was remodeled and also to team up with Sampley, great company that makes great software and um, do something fun, get people in a room together and make music. Speaking of Sampley, I forgot to mention this when I was recording the video, but you can actually download the stems for this entire project for free in the description below. You can go there, type in your email, and then it redirects to a Sampley project. You can download those stems totally for free. So go do that. So let's dive into it. Um, this episode is going to center on like making DI instruments sound good, because uh, sometimes that can be kind of challenging. All right, let's get into it. So before we get into the nitty gritty of stuff, let's just take a little listen to uh, the chorus here. So that's the chorus. Let's go to the verse. All right, so that's the song for the drum bus. Just a little bit of compression, a little bit of a uh, little bit more compression, a little bit of bus EQ, and then a little tape machine. Um, which is super important. Let's go ahead and solo up drums and, and listen to what that stuff does before we get into the individual tracks. Um, and you can hear David and everything else going on in these drums. Um, so here's compression. Here's the channel strip with compression and EQ, and then the tape machine. Man, that tape machine is really controlling everything. I'm going into it pretty aggressively, and it's doing so much saturation that it kind of becomes like another compressor. Um, but this song was really dark. All the elements in this track are kind of moody and dark, and everybody's kind of was playing in a lower register. If I could go back in time and have people kind of spread out in the frequency range, because the hardest part about this mix was kind of trying to get things to stand out, even though everybody was kind of down lower in there, you know, lower on the fretboard, lower on the fingerboard, on the violin, um, lower in the piano. Everybody's kind of clumped together in the same space. And, you know, we recorded this all live in one room together. So if I could go back in time, uh, I'd focus a little more on like, hey, we're all kind of cluttering one area. Let's spread out a little bit because arrangement is like the, the most important part of mixing. Okay, so outside of drums, what we have here is uh, we have some two versions of bass, which we're definitely going to get into. We have this plucky version in the beginning. Which has a ton of stuff on it and that reverb sounds insane soloed, but you can't even really tell it's there. And really all that reverb is doing is pushing the bass back a little bit because I kind of wanted to, again, we it's just five musicians in a room. There's only so much we can do from a performance standpoint to make things grow, especially because like for me, I'm watching my dynamics to make sure that I'm not, you know, bleeding into the vocal and the violin mic too much and things like that. So there's only so much we can do to like kind of grow this thing. So one of the things that I did from a mixing standpoint is took this bass, which was just DI in, and I kind of, you know, shrunk it down uh, before the first chorus, the intro on the first chorus, stay very shrunken down, small, the, there's a little bit of reverb that pushes pushes the bass like a little further away. And then in the first chorus, when it kicks in, there's more low end there and everything just kind of gets a little more um, big and boomy and in your face and like aggressive, which is cool. So, and then in the chorus.
And that is an aggressive bass, and I love it. Um, David, the guy that uh, sings and plays piano for this performance, uh, he's the artist, he wrote the song, and, you know, I, I did the first mix of this, and it was kind of just like, you know, DI bass, kind of mostly clean bass, um, and, you know, drums, like, you know, wasn't as tape machine heavy and stuff like that. I sent him the first mix, and he said, hey, for this song, I really want, like, bass and drums to be, like, the thing. I want them to be aggressive. I want them to be gritty. I want them to be driving the like excitement of the track. So that's when I kind of got a little more creative with the bass. So, um, you know, this bass in the chorus, again, it was just DI. And again, part of the focus of this episode to me is, you know, bass was DI, violin was DI, David's piano was DI. And I want to talk about ways where you can kind of take DI instruments and give them a little bit of life. You know, a lot of times DI instruments, unless you get a little creative, can sound kind of boring. And they can sound like they weren't recorded in a room, which for me doing this mix, that's a big problem because we were all in a room and we filmed this on video. And when you watch a video and it sounds like all the instruments weren't recorded in a room because they were all recorded DI, it gets a little confusing. So I wanted to sonically put these instruments in the same room, even if they were captured with a DI. And uh, that's what we did. So the bass originally sounded like this. That's a great bass sound, but I added a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ. And then this Ampeg is like the thing that makes the sound. So uh, here it is without and with. That adds a lot more grit. And then it goes into a tape machine, adding more grit and distortion. And then saturation, more grit and distortion. And for this bass, making it, you know, making it feel like it was being played as aggressively as needed to, um, I I really like this plug in Saturn because with the low end, I can kind of control the low end and not distort it like it has no drive on it. But in the mid range and in the top end, it's way more distorted. And that really, really, really is super important. Um, in like sculpting this bass tone. And then I just did another EQ to just kind of control some of the like frequencies that were boosted when I added the <laughs> Ampeg thing, the tape machine and the Saturn thing. Um, okay, so that's bass. Uh, then we have violin and violin was recorded with the DI. And as you're seeing here, there's 15 billion plugins on it. And the issue I was having with the violin is, again, we were all recording in the same room and my drums, the, the violin had a DI signal, which is all I used for this performance. And the violin also had a small diaphragm condenser, kind of pencil condenser mic that we were miking. Because the cymbals I was playing, it, the this, had, this song had a lot more ride cymbal uh, than uh, we did another song that I broke down in the last YouTube video. Um, cymbals were just more controlled for me in that performance. For this performance, there was just more cymbals in the violin mic and it just became unusable. It became another overhead and you couldn't really distinguish drums from violin in it. So it just kind of became worthless as a violin mic. But I used the DI and to get creative with the DI, um, I did a couple of things. So here's the, the raw DI sound. To me, that does not even sound like a violin. And this is what I'm saying. With DI instruments, sometimes they just don't feel like they were recorded in a space and you need to focus on that. But sometimes... They just don't sound good because the DI pickup on that mic just, you know, was, um, you know, some of them sound good. Some of them don't sound as good. This one just sounds really muddy and, and interesting. And having this DI source to blend into a real mic would maybe be really nice. But this on its own is, is not going to work. So the first thing that I did is just a little denoise because I end up doing so much that I it, it gets crazy. 
So the next thing that I did was multiband compression. And you can see there's like the huge amount of stuff going on in like the kind of low mids because this DI signal to me, it, it sounds like the violin was, it, sound, it sounds like the violin was recorded with like a towel over it or something. So I had to take care of like all that low end darkening and like just cloudying the thing. So before, Okay, so there you go. Uh, and then some EQ and probably compress. No. Again, more brightening um, and then a tape machine. makes it feel a little grittier and takes adds makes the parts that are distorting maybe a little more colorful and then a compressor So this is brightening up a little bit, and then I'm with the makeup gain. I'm actually turning it down to uh, because I've done a lot of boosting EQ in the high end. Um, and then this move this is an interesting move. Yeah, this just kind of notches out some of this like not as cool thing here. Um, and then this gets automated on at some point, and that's probably just to make it cut through in certain spots where, again, one of the things about this song is everybody's kind of in the same frequency range, so that probably just makes it poke through a little bit. And then this lo-fi is popped on, automated on at some point. But so we go from this... to this... So at least it sounds a little more like a violin to me. And uh, then I also added reverb. And this is a huge part. Um, this is a kind of medium hall reverb with this Nimbus thing. Um, kind of a cool reverb. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I don't always think it sounds the best, but um, sometimes it just works. And then this is just, this reverb is mostly to add space around the violin and then add brightness to it because that DI just had no top end. So um, here it is with reverb. And it sounds a little telephony, but it really helps it give it space in the mix. So here it is in full context. And these little fills without reverb are just, you know, crazy. It just sounds like a violin way too close to be in an actual room that you're looking at on, on video. Um, so that's Violin World. Um, next would be guitar. And with guitar, um, this guitar denoise thing, Dave Moore played guitar. He sounded great and used a real amp in another room. And um, that amp was noisy. So that isotope guitar denoise is amazing a um, little bit of compression a little bit of mid-range boot bump boop <laughs> uh, I automate this on later in the tune and then this smack attack so uh, all pretty standard moves on there except this smack attack so smack attack is a transient designer that um <laughs> So 
So in this second verse, Dave is playing and his guitar with, you know, I don't know if it was a pedal or the reverb in the amp, but it was a little too reverby, and this was just getting lost. The like sixteenth, that was just turning into just turning into something that like just seems too far away, seems a little too watery. So the transient designer, I automated on in this verse, and it really just brings the guitar right into your face, so that while that riff is going, you're hearing it. And then this is a uh, some <laughs> not exactly subtle EQ moves to take care of just probably weird things that were like resonant. Um, so here's the guitar before. Super cool sound, but just seems a little too far away. And then after. Especially like in a part like right here. Like kind of the bloom of the pedal effects and stuff seem to be taking over kind of the top end, the actual melody of what the guitar is playing. So all those EQ moves, like Dave's playing was great and his tone was great. Most of that is just to like kind of rebalance the guitar so that the like blossomy, bloomy part of all the reverb he's using isn't overtaking the uh, kind of um, melodies he's playing. Uh, I did a little bit, I, I felt like at the beginning of the song, the tune needed a little bit of like uh, reinforcement of chord changes. So I did a little drone that is just like this organ thing that I then probably make, <laughs> that I then filter out everything except the low end. Um, and that's just to, this is when the bass is still all shrunk down and stuff. So I felt like it needed a little bit of low end, but it didn't need, so this bass part is really, really, you know, fast paced. I felt like having all of that low end boom, 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 was just like too much too soon. So, but it still needed some low end. Otherwise it just doesn't sound like it's a complete sonic range. So, okay, for this thing, for this little shrunken down bass part, what it started like was this. Cool part, but, you know, again, I wanted to shrink it down, wanted to make the song grow. So EQ, Saturn... And this gate is actually an important part. That plucky part, one, there's some like uh, buzz going on with, you know, probably through his pedal board, there was a little bit of buzz created. Um, so this gate is making sure that that kind of goes away. But this gate is also making sure that the part isn't boom, 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 but it's dum, 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 dum. It's making sure that it's as tight as possible. Uh, and then I do some lo fi. adding some kind of, you know, making it sound a little lo-fi. <laughs> uh, here's Sans Amp. Okay, darkening, but also adding beef. Here's a crazy move. Uh, this move is probably just to make this like kind of 100 bump cut through on like smaller speakers. Um, it was probably just getting like a little lost there. And then here's more Saturn. That's taking away some of the darkness and adding a little bit of grip. Uh, and then here's the here's the reverb. I think something got screwed up somewhere. <laughs> Because that's a little more reverb than I think was on there originally. But you get the idea. So to piano. So David's piano was um, 
recorded. I, I talked about this in the last episode. David's piano is a CP70 by Yamaha. And it's actually like a real piano. It's electric, but it has real strings in it. It needs to be tuned every now and then. It was wildly out of tune. So David retracked his exact part as MIDI. Uh, I actually picked that MIDI sound and I'm curious as to... It's got a little tape machine on there. It's got a little compression and it's got a little thing. So um, you can hear it's kind of like warbly and stuff. Um, uh, that's because I was like time aligning stuff instead of time moving stuff in MIDI. Like I was aligning this stuff with warp in Pro Tools because I felt like with MIDI, if when you start gritting stuff with MIDI, all the complex parts of the chords he's playing, like when you play a piano chord, not every finger hits together. Um, and if you start gritting stuff with MIDI, those like natural like finger rolly things maybe start to get a little screwed up. Um, so I wanted to preserve that. So I time warped this stuff. Um, and I was cool. You know, a lot of times when, when you use the warp function in Pro Tools, it becomes too like warbly. Um, which then you don't want. But I actually liked the vibe for this, so I just real quick warp stuff. Um, a lot of times when that happens, what I'll end up doing is actually just going through and like beat detective and slimping audio slices and sliding them around. But I kind of liked the like watery thing that it did. So that was the piano. Like honestly, it's just like a little bit of EQ taking out like all this low end that was already there and then just kind of a little bit of compression. Now let's go up to vocals. So vocals sounded like this originally. At the edge of a sword with toxic tears to front law and I did a little bit of tuning on David's vocal, not too much, just in certain spots where there's background vocals, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, this clarity VX is the most important part of these vocals because as you can hear, same greed like Pax Romana at the edge of a sword. There's a lot of drums in that mic, so this Clarity VX isolates the vocals from background noise, and um, uh, with it... Same greed, like Pax Romana at the edge of a sword. With the drums would just come down a little bit, and it does add some artifacts, but I think what you gain in drums not being in the vocal mic, you it's worth it. Um, then it's a channel strip that's doing some compression and EQ. Then it's this dynamic EQ that's taking care of like weird resonances in his voice. And um, these dynamic EQ moves down here are for like, I don't want to take away all the body of his voice down there, but um, David was kind of moving around where he was singing into the mic. And there are spots where like his voice got very dark and cloudy. And uh, this stuff, instead of adding high end, which is going to cause weird problems, this stuff just dynamically, when he sings words, ducks that low end at first, so that um, it, he, you're not you're not losing his his voice. And then another channel strip with you know compression EQ, a deesser, and again I use like multiple rounds of deessing. So here, this compression is doing a little bit of deessing. Um, here, with this compression, you're getting a little bit of de-essing. The sibilance is taking care of some de-essing. And then this C4, which is a multi-band compressor, is also mostly doing de-essing. Uh, and then at the very end, I added some like brightness at 8K. So, um... Same greed, like Pax Romana at the edge of a sword, with the toxic tears to front law and order, like a Babylon of old, it's the same beast. Same greed, like Pax Romana at the edge of a sword, with the toxic tears to front law and order. So there you go. And with his stuff, there's also some verb in delay. Same greed, like Pax Romana at the edge of a sword, with toxic tears to front law and order. Sounds like a lot when it's not in the mix, but the, the reverb is pretty subtle. Uh... Same greed, like Pax Romana at the edge of a sword, with toxic tears to front law and order. Like a so that's that. And then in the choruses, uh, I have the BGVs muted. Um, here's the chorus without the BGVs. She sings softly in midnight air. Sometimes I can hear your breath. Oh. 
this part right here where David's doing the, you know, kind of Oz at the end of it, um, I just really felt like, you know, we, we tried to keep these videos because they're going to be video performances of the five of us live in a room. We tried to not make this like, we all get in a room together, we perform on video, and then we just re-record everything later because um, that's not true to what's on video. But I just felt like, you know, this is going to be released on Spotify. People are going to, I'm going to mix, someone's going to master. Like, let's make it sound as good as we can. Um, so we didn't want to get away from, we didn't want to add a bunch of stuff that wasn't there in the room. But I did feel like on his Oz, um, you know, his voice... I think he was focusing on the like live video of it. So his voice in those moments just kind of, you know, it's not the most beautiful falsetto ever. And in, you know, a studio, it, it's really, it's in a studio setting, what I would do if I was recording David is I, was, I would have him do the first line. And then for the Oz, we would probably do that on like a, another take. Um, and I'd, I'd, we'd be able to really dial in like getting those Oz to feel like breathy, but also still present and in tune and everything. But this is just one take. It's just one dude singing into a mic. So what I did is, luckily, my wife is a fantastic singer. So what I said is, hey, can you come here and record vocal harmonies for this song? So she added this. Which is super dope. Um, I did end up tuning uh, my wife's vocals pretty tight. And it's not because she has she has extraordinary pitch. It's because um, I did not want to add more variables <laughs> into uh, the... Because nothing else was like hard tuned. I tuned a couple of David's notes here and there, but like nothing else was like hard tuned. And um, I didn't want to add any more like harmonic confusion into the mix. Um, and also I wanted these BGVs to, again, because my wife wasn't there singing in the video, um, I wanted these voice vocal things to feel a little bit more like like a synthesizer or something and less like a choir that's singing. Um, so, uh, and all I did to her voice, I did almost nothing. Um, like for real. Uh, I, and I added a little bit of grit. I did a little bit of EQ, but then that was it, man. And um, here, here are each, here's each part by itself. Here's the high harmony, or the, I guess the lead harmony where she's doubling David. Here's the high harmony. And here's the low harmony. And you can hear the lead part is more melodically complex than the BGVs. And again, um, you want to simplify, you want to make sure that nothing's cluttering what the lead vocal is doing. So here are the vocals together. And it's nice. And in the mix, you can barely hear these harmonies, but they do, it's the one, it's the kind of thing where, okay, here's without the harmonies during the chorus. And here's with the harmonies. pretty subtle but it just fills everything out it supports david's voice so that you know where he's all the way up there his voice was tired this is like not the first take we had done that day um so you know there you go and all of this is going to a bgv bus that goes through a tape machine does a little bit of eq and then it goes to a reverb like i just sent all the vocals to the reverb um, again, to kind of make them a synthesizer, not like a lead vocal voice. And that about does it. I did add, um, toward this guitar solo back here, I did add some like swells. Because again, I talked about this in the last video, I didn't want to bash crash cymbals because vocals and, you know, everybody's in the same room. Um... So these swells just kind of help these moments grow without like, they're not super loud in the mix. And then I did add a tambourine um, to in this outro here. I 
because honestly, when all else fails, you know, we've been jamming on this solo section for, you know, probably 16 bars already and we have eight or so more to go. It just needs to lift a little bit. And I felt like adding a tambourine wasn't, um, wasn't tricking anyone. Um, okay. And now like, let's just quickly go through like what I did to the drums. Kick sounds like a kick mic. There's a little bit of gate on it and uh, some compression and EQ. And again, because I have two kick mics, this kick in mic is really for like this thing here and for the attack of the kick. And then the kick out mic is all the low end. Um, snare top mic. Boosting the fundamental. Not really doing much on this channel strip other than a little bit of EQ. Uh, again, that has a gate on it. And then there's a second snare drum mic that is adding all the kind of top end. Obviously, that's much brighter, adding more grit, attack, all that stuff. Snare bottom mic. Uh... Here are the toms. These toms had towels over them. Um, and what I'm doing there is uh, just boosting the fundamental, boosting kind of some presence, same thing here. And then they both get Fab Filter Saturn where I'm boosting the low end, but not really driving it. And then in the top end, I'm driving it a lot. And this move, this thing right here makes these toms actually stand out on an iPhone mic or anything like that. Hi-hat mic, all, all I'm really doing, I mean, I have an EQ move here that's just taking out all of the low end of the hi-hat mic and then um, just distorting the top of it. Uh, overheads are pretty important on this one. This is what they sound like um, coming in. So compression, EQ, more EQ. Dynamically taking care of this spiky part. Um, these were small diaphragm condensers I used and I just felt like cymbals and stuff get a little pokey in this area, but I don't want to lose the, the like top end totally. So I do a dynamic EQ there and just scooping out some more low end. Um, a little bit of saturation. Love that. And then doing even more low end and high end management. This little weird mic is a, a room mic that's like getting compressed and EQ'd on the way in and then I just do a little bit more of that making sure there's no top end in it making sure it's like all mid-range pretty low in the blend and then we have a room mic And that's getting compressed a good bit, getting a good bit of EQ, and then even more EQ, where again, I'm just making this a mid-range thing. And you can hear this more in like some of the, like the verses and stuff. It just adds some like throw to the drums. It just, again, puts them in a space. And um, man, I think that's pretty much it. That's the song. You can check out this full performance over on Sampley's YouTube channel um, if you just want to see the beautiful kind of performance of this. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this, hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment if you have questions, or you want to see something else like this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.